Hey everyone, I recently received a question from Marty, and it's an interesting setup that he has, but maybe it might help some of you. So let's go ahead and check this out. Marty's saying that he currently has a X32, and he needs to pass one to one through the input to fader and controls to the output, no mix down. So that means that he wants to have an input coming into any of the 32 inputs on the console, and he wants to be able to control any of the volume and preamp and gate dynamics, EQ, and volume of this fader and have that go to a specific output and have that one to one. So that means the input one would go to output one, input two would go to output two, input 32 would go into output 32. So let's go ahead and check out this really interesting routing and see how this works. Now the routing that we're going to be using today is actually something I've covered in a previous video of how to record with our processing on the Behringer X32, which is kind of fun. So we're going to be utilizing two things. One, Marty needs to have a stage box that has 16 outputs. So he would either need to have uh, two S16s or an S32 with 16 outputs. Additionally, he would need to use the 16 outputs that are available to us on the back of the full-size X32. So let's first set up the routing so that any input coming into the back of the console is going to our channels. So we would go over to routing and tab over to input, and we want to make sure that we have local 1 through 32 selected. This means that any of my 32 inputs on the console here are going to go to the console channels. So the next thing that we're gonna set up is the actual outputs. So let's go ahead and tab over to out on our patching and we're going to go to output one. And what we're gonna do is we're going to go to direct out, channel one, post fader. And we're going to do this on every single output until we get to 16. So output two is going to be from direct out, channel two, post fader. Output three, channel three, output four, channel four, Six. Okay, so we can see that we have, when we scroll this up and down, we're going to go and see one-to-one -one patching here. So our channel one is on output one, channel two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. Next, we're going to use the P16 or the ultranet output of the console and we're going to route that to our stage box that we have connected on AES50 port A. So tab over to P16, and we're going to select our direct outs of channel 17, and then we're going to go to, which is 18, 3, 19, 32. Now we will notice that this currently is set up on a tap of pre-EQ, so we will need to change all of those to post fader. So post fader on all of these. Okay, so as we scroll up here, we will see that all of them are post fader. So we have one starting on 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, and 31, 32. So on our XLR outs, we have one through 16 post fader. On our P16, we have 17 through 32 post fader. Next, we actually need to route our P16 to our outputs that we have on my stage box. It could be a S32, or in my case, it's DL32. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna tab over to AES50A, because that's where I have my DL32 connected to. And on my one through 16, I'm going to select P16 1 through 16. Now, this routing has made it so that any input that I turn up and connect into the back of the console is going to have a one-to-one -one input to output. And that means that any processing that I do on this channel is going to end up going on the output of the 
output that is corresponding to this channel. So channel one, anything that I do to this channel, including gain up and down, muting, compression, EQ, will come out of the output XLR1 on the back of our full size X32. And so if I turn this down, it will turn it down on the XLR. If we go to 17 through 32, any of these channels will go on the outputs of our DL32 that I have connected to this console, which would be output one through 16. So 17 is output one, 32 is output 16, that is on our DL32. Again, any of the volume, muting, EQ, dynamics, all of that is taken on our things because we have this set up to be on our direct outputs and its post fader. So this is a pretty interesting use case, and I hope that Marty drops a comment down below of what he's doing with this type of setup. But if any of you have a question and you think that I might be able to answer that for you, go ahead and drop a comment below. I'd love to hear the questions that you're struggling through on your setup that you have at your church or venue. So thanks so much for watching.